How's it going? This is Rayspace here with a new concept for a part that will help us out with these long ships that I build in Far Future or with KSP Interstellar in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. Though this doesn't really require Realism Overhaul, it just so happens that I'll be doing it with Realism Overhaul here. And so we have these long ships that are more than 100 meters long. Uh, they're also fairly wide, though, you know, we would want to, before we launch them, retract the radiators. Uh, and I don't know why it's still reading 32 meters. There we go. Uh, so about 9.4, 9.7 meters in diameter and then 107.5 meters long. So that's pretty darn long and awkward to launch. And we need a way to launch it now. Of course, the logical thing to do would be to chop it up into pieces and launch it and assemble it into orbit. But it's only 160 tons. It seems a little bit tedious for all that, right? Uh, if it's just going to be this size, especially because we have such a advanced engine in the back, in this case, a fission fragment rocket engine with 32,000 seconds of ISP, uh, so it can have a fairly substantial payload up front and still not be that heavy, but it is still long. In this situation, if we were launching lots of these all the time in the future, we would want a launcher that was meant for it instead of trying to constantly assemble these things in orbit. And that's what I'm here to introduce today. So what we have is what I've called the petal launcher and that is because it has petals and it wraps around our vehicle instead of just being at the bottom or top. It will need boosters and I haven't made those yet. They'll probably need to be a custom shape for it. Uh, as you can see, we don't have enough Delta V to orbit right now and I haven't made the boosters. There's just a concept introduction. Also, I'll have to build the engines into it. I forgot about this aspect, but of course, uh, if we extend this, the engines aren't going along because they don't go along with animations when you put them on like that. So, yeah, I don't know how... There must be a way to have it so that things move with the animations, but I don't know how to do that in my own models. But the idea of this is this whole business sits inside here. You can see there's sort of a brace there. It really should be taller. But for now, it's this size, and then this all lifts off. We would probably have some things on the launcher on the inside to help support this all together, of course. And, you know, those might be custom made for the particular payload. But if we're launching a whole bunch of them, it might be worthwhile. And in principle, this pedal launcher would actually come back down. If we take a look at it in detail, what happens? I'll need to zoom in quite a lot here. Let's see. Closed up. It looks like that. Okay. And then we have my ED9 engines, which are Hydrolox 4000 kilonewton engines right now. And 385 seconds at the sea level, 434 in vacuum, hopefully not crazy. Uh, so that's what we have. We have eight of those. This is a fairly modest size, but I haven't put the boosters on, but I don't expect it to be greater than super heavy or something like that. Uh, and then we have it for retrieval. The engine should go along with it and I'll modify it so that it has the engines built in. But what you see is the engines are supposed to go into the little cubby that is created by that piece dropping down. See that that bit drops down and then these bits swing down so that the engines are protected like that. And then we have the heat shield tiles like this and it is empty. It is a hollow thing when it comes back down. I'll also have to put RCS thrusters. And so it shouldn't be very heavy and it has a huge surface area. So Hopefully it can re-enter, but I have no idea how something shaped like this re-enters. Uh, the top would be steel, and so hopefully I don't have to have... The only reason I didn't put heat tiles on it is because it looks better without the heat tiles. Really, probably the nose flaps should have heat tiles, but you can see the nose flaps go like that. So it's very, very much shaped for a vehicle of this size. 
and then it goes down like that. And then we will have the boosters, those will not be recoverable. Uh, but then they'll need parachutes, uh, probably, is how we're going to do it. It could be a different way, you know, we could have it uh, close up again, but I don't think so. It's a little bit dodgy to have it close up again in the atmosphere. Okay to have it deploy in space, but probably not great to have it move in the atmosphere, I th I'm thinking. So I can't really use this right now, I'll launch it right now, because it won't have enough thrust to weight ratio at the moment anyway. But that's the idea, and it is one of those crazy ideas. But functional, <laughs> functional, it doesn't, I mean, it's a conceit to have it be recoverable at all. Uh, it could just deploy a little, like that much, and then free the thing and then just be a disposable launcher. But if we wanted to be futuristic, we would probably want it to be recoverable. And so I've made it that way. So that was the idea. And I will continue to work on it. It'll take a few things more and probably a lot of parachutes in order to make it work out for us. But I have thought up the method by which it keeps things safe, the engine safe, I mean. And yeah. Uh, there is uh, just uh, one of those procedural decouplers there, by the way. I wonder if it's sitting on the surface properly. Anyway, that's the idea. This is just a quick video to introduce it. This came about because of a discussion in my Discord where people were... Well, it is actually floating up. I didn't get the position of that right. There's, there's a node here, of course. Uh, so we can actually sink that down and accommodate larger ships, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, uh, there, there were other long ships being discussed and how to launch them was being discussed and I came up with this idea. So actually, it probably this probably extends right to that, which would be good. Alright, so tweaks will need to be done, but today's work in space was making this model and it makes use of the textures that I already have in the far future, or not the far future, but the future tech mod that I've made. So it doesn't increase the size of that mod very much and I'll be included in that mod once I'm done with it. I think the uh, it only amounts to increasing the size of that mod by 725 kilobytes. <laughs> so that's just the model, the textures are already part of the mod anyway. So it's a good deal from in that respect. It still looks interesting, fascinating. Uh, or completely wrong, depending on your point of view. People are very intolerant to new ideas, I've found. But anyway, more work needs to be done, and I'll get to work on that. But this has been today's crazy idea. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.